Welcome back to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba. All right, we've got Victor Hagani. He is the founder of CIO Elm Partners and uh, A-L-M-F-U-N-D-S dot com is the website. Victor, welcome to the show. Thank you, Michael. Good to be on. I'm glad you're here. All right, you spent nearly 30 years actively involved in the markets and the financial innovation. Uh, you started your career in 84 in a bond portfolio analysis research at Solomon Brothers, and then you became a managing director in the barn, bo, excuse me, the bond arbitrage group uh, run by John uh, Merriweather. Uh, th- take us from there, because that's, that's some pretty, pretty good experience in the financial sector. Um, well, I, um, you know, I worked for, uh, for Solomon in the, uh, as, you, as you said, in the bond arbitrage group, and we took that business and um, and uh, created a hedge fund called Long Term Capital Management from that, um, which which um, which actually it was it, it was a very eventful few years, but it didn't last all that long because by 1998, um, you know we had um, the the business came to an end when we suffered very significant losses, and um, you know I I stayed around uh, for a while after that to help with the liquidation and the starting of a successor uh, business with with John and some of my partners. And then in about 2001, I decided to take a break and, and kind of retool and get some distance uh, from the markets. And, and, uh, and, and that period of about 10 years where um, I started to really focus on investing for, uh, for my family um, wound up leading to the founding of Elm Partners about seven years ago or six and a half years ago. And, um, and Elm Partners is doing something really different than uh, what I did at Solomon and LTCM, which is trying to help individual investors with um, sound, uh, efficient, um, uh, well-diversified, long-only um, asset allocation using index funds and ETFs. And at Solomon uh, and at LTCM, what we were doing you know, was, was really – more focused on, um, uh, you know, on trying to beat the market in, in different ways with our client base being either Solomon's capital or later on at LTCM with uh, the capital of, of institutional investors. So let me stop there. That was a bit of a mouthful, but that brings us right up to now. Okay. All right. Um, let's, let's get into this. Uh, the, the investing involves two tasks, finding good investments and sizing them appropriately. Bring us down that road. Okay, great. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly how I like to think about it. We've got investment selection, and then there's investment sizing. And investment selection is is really important. Figuring out what it is that you want to invest in, and um, and interestingly, um, you know, in, in terms of uh, you know, sort of TV or or media or popular press, probably a hundred percent of that is is focused or close to it on investment selection and investment sizing. Um, it's kind of a, a, you know, it seems like less important of a question in some ways. It's like I've got a certain amount of savings, and okay, I'll just decide that I want to be, you know, 60, 70, or 80 percent in uh, in equities um, or in some kind of risky portfolio and keep some sort of cash and bonds on the side. And for a lot of people, that's as far as the thinking goes. But there's really um, a lot more to it, I think, than than that. And and when we look at uh, investor returns, um, which, you know, there's been a, a bunch of articles that have come out recently with the latest update on kind of a survey of, of uh, fund returns versus investor returns, where investors do a lot worse than the IRR of the funds that they invest in because of how they're managing their, their asset allocation. And, um, you know, I think there's really a lot that investors can uh, can do to improve the sizing decisions that they make, you know, how much to have in uh, whatever it is that they think are the best things to invest in. And of course, sizing, um, if you get sizing wrong, um, that's how you can really lose all your money. And, and you know, it's, it's kind of hard to lose all your money if you're getting sizing right, but investment selection wrong, you get bad returns. You know, you have, you have poor returns, but when you get the sizing decision wrong, you can really kind of you could do a lot of damage to your savings so um so that's been one of our big focuses at, at elm partners with the research we're doing is trying to think more about uh about asset allocation and sizing and and sort of letting i think that investors kind of have a sense for uh for the investment selection task and and there's an awful lot of help 
uh, that they get um, already. You know, the, I didn't, we didn't want to add our voice to the investment selection question as much as the investment sizing one. Well, th- th- I assume that this is part of the experiment that you had published in the journal Portfolio Management, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, th- thanks for mentioning that. I was just thinking about, uh, you know, how much that really impacted our thinking on this topic. Uh, about three years ago, we conducted a, a real-life experiment with, with real money where we got um, quantitatively trained uh, uh, students and some young finance professionals to uh, to play a game where we gave them $25 and, and allowed them to flip a computer-generated coin that had a 60% chance of landing heads. And we told them that that's, what the coin, that's how the coin was programmed, and we allowed them to place bets with... Uh, as much money as they had in their bank, uh, you know, depending on if they would make money, they could bet more and so on. And what we found was that uh, we gave them a half an hour to place their bets and there would be a maximum uh, payout that we would give them, which we'd tell them if they reached it, uh, which was $250. And, um, you know, with the 60 or so uh, people that we did this with, that that 30% of them went bust in 30 minutes. Now, that's Poor, that's poor um, bankroll management or poor, poor decisions on sizing. Only 20% of them hit the $250 max, you know, and, and uh, you know, $250 for uh, an undergraduate, um, you know, math, <laughs> math student was, was a lot of money to, to be playing for. Um, and uh, so only, only 20% kind of got to the optimal place, and the other 80%, you know, that almost half of them went bust and the rest of them didn't do too well. And that really showed us that there was a lot that we could do to help people to focus on this question and these these um, and to kind of you know bring to um, recirculate a lot of the um, academic literature that uh, that had been written on this topic of, of sizing and portfolio choice um, you know in, in the past. So it's kind of a a bit of a, a, a mission for us, and and it's an important part of what we do in terms of helping people to manage their savings as well. Victor, we've got to run, but thanks so much. We'll have you back so we can drill down into some of the different chapters of these things that you were talking about, all right? Oh, pleasure. Thanks so much, Michael. Take care. My pleasure. Victor Hagani, founder, CIO, Elm Partners, elmfunds.com. You've been listening to CEO Money with Michael Yorba. Don't forget, podcasts, social media, all over the place, anywhere you can find it, we're there. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you soon.